Hi Aries, welcome to your reading for July 2024. We have the Oracle decks here, um, Oracle books from the decks I'm going to be using for today's reading and we're going to get straight into it. We are still in Cancer season. Um, by the time you watch this video we'll, we'll have had a new moon in Cancer. Um, that would be on the um, Friday the 5th of July. But let's get straight into your reading. We're going to start with a message from the Angels, Ancestors, Angels and Ancestors Oracle cards deck. So what does Aries, Sun, Moon or Rising need to know for July 2024? Aries, Sun, Moon and Rising for July 2024. Interesting. I haven't looked at it yet, but when it came up, it came up in reverse. Um, I don't usually pay too much attention if Oracle cards um, come up in reverse, but could be significant right you have mother earth feel loved and comforted so we're going to put her there just unblur the screen okay hopefully you can see that and then we're going to get the tarot cards out for you so just a note as I've picked it up, you've got the Emperor, which is Aries, <laughs> on the bottom of the deck. What's on the other end? Ten of Wands, okay. Don't know if that'll be significant, but we'll find out. Let me unblur this again, because it's blurred up again. Okay. So Aries, Sun, Moon and Rising. Let's get your tarot cards out and see what comes up for you. What does Aries, Sun, Moon and Rising need to know for July? 2024, you've got the Hermit. The word cocoon is coming to mind, but let's see what else comes out. What else do we need to know for Aries, Sun, Moon and Rising? And I mean, it's not surprising seeing Mother Energy there because it is Cancer um, season and Cancer energy is connected to the Mother. Taurus is coming to mind as well. So I don't know if there's relevance, anything relevant going on for you in a Taurus at present. Right, I've got the Seven of Pentacles in reverse. We have the Nine of Swords in reverse. And we also have the Wheel of Fortune in reverse. That's a lot of reversals. Okay. Let's get the clarifiers out because it is feeling ambiguous at present, to be honest. So let's see what else comes out for you. Let's start with the Hermit. I think one message to take from this at present is if there's a decision to be made about something um, or changes to be made in general is not not to rush. You're being advised not to rush or you may feel like you don't want to rush to make a decision with these energies. Let's see what else comes out for you. I mean, the Hermit is a card of introspection. And then I said the word cocoon came up. Right, so firstly for the Hermit, we have Strength card in reverse. Why is it in reverse? <laughs> you might be needing time to, um, time to yourself, to be honest. And just a sort of time to... to well, yeah, think for yourself, as I've already said. I don't think I said think for yourself, did I? I said time to yourself, maybe time to think to yourself. It might be that you need a break. Um, if you've had a lot of stress recently, you might be needing a break from that. It's that seven of pentacles that's making me think about decisions. If you, I don't necessarily think it feels like avoidance. I think it feels more like needing time and... Um, like say, one example that's come into mind is if you've got a stressful, a highly stressful job and you've just been working really hard and you just need a bit of a break from having to make all of those decisions and plans and do this and do that and 
just take a time out. And another, another thing that is coming to mind um, is if anyone has been um, either laid off or made redundant or recently left a job and just having that time to sort of be in your sanctuary, in your cocoon and just having the time to think for yourself and do a bit of soul searching, that comes to mind as well. Before anything can change. Let me see what comes up after that strength card because I have a thought on that. But it, for some, it might be about needing this time if you're taking a time out to regain your strength. And some of you might be turning to maternal people in your life for this. I mean, I would say first and foremost, the mother energy. If it is that, you, um, that you're needing that sense of comfort, sanctuary, cocoon, whatever, it may be you giving that to yourself. So it's kind of parenting or mothering yourself. Or for some, it might be literal going to mother figures, whether it is your actual mother, a grandmother, an aunt, um, a sister, or even if it's a male, a, a man, you know, because men, obviously, we all have masculine and feminine in us. And men can provide nurturing as well, can't they? But um, as I say, let's see. Try that again. I'm getting a weird image in my head of um well it's not weird for anyone who's watched Dirty Dancing it is one of my favorite films when I was a kid I used to watch that film every weekend even though it was not for kids um there's a scene in the film um I can't even remember exactly what part it is but it's that there's a part where Patrick Swayze is um saying about um I think it's when Penny, I don't know, something to do with when Penny goes missing or whatever, or he's making ex an excuse for Penny because, you know, there's a situation that goes on with her that she, um, yeah, you'd have to watch the film to find out if you haven't already seen it. But he's, there's a bit where he says she needs a break. I f at first, I thought it was him saying, I need a break because he's been overworked, but he's saying she needs a break, she needs a break. But the way I took it initially was, it's, you know, when you're really frustrated and you've got people coming at you left, right and centre, about all sorts of stuff and just loads are going on and you're just like I need a break I need a break I've had enough I need a break it's giving me that kind of vibe a little bit um so as I say it could be with that strength card in reverse either you need you need some time to regain your strength um you feel like you haven't got the strength to deal with things let's see just a bit of recuperation possibly four of cups that to me looks like stress I mean we've already got the nine of swords there in reverse so that's to me that's a desire to want to escape from the stress with the hermit directly above it and then the seven of pentacles upright usually is about assessing reassessing seeing how far you've come i mean obviously there are different meanings but seeing it in reverse there it's like not being in a time where you don't want to have to make decisions or yeah can't put it any other way four of cups of meat stress isn't it? it's having trouble making a decision it's like at this point you may not be in the right place to, um, to have to deal with a load of decisions and, and whatever, whatever's going on. Or it's just that you need more time. Like if anybody's trying to rush you or you feel that you have to rush, it's like, no, nope, take your time with this. It's like that no, being in more of a nurtured, comforted space, getting into that type of energy, it will, it will make you more equipped to, um, to move forward, to change things, to make decisions if you need to. We've got the Ace of Wands in reverse. The Ace of Wands is a card of action, new chapters, new beginnings. It's in reverse. Again, take your time. There's no rush. It's, it's not saying it's not going to happen, whatever's going on. It's just that you just need to take time with this. And then you have the Lovers. I will get one more after the Lovers. You might even need time to think about what it is that you really desire, what you really want, what you really love. If there's a relationship involved, um, romantic or otherwise, it might be having a bit of a time out or introspection in relation to that, in what you want in that situation, how you want it to move forward, if you want changes. Let's get one more after the lovers, please. Three of Cups. How you want to be supported even, that might be something that comes to mind. In terms of a relationship or whatever situation it is, sometimes it is contemplating how, how you want to be supported with that. For someone, you might even be thinking who are your, or who are your genuine supporters in a situation. 
and who do you want to connect with and work with, celebrate with, engage with in general. It isn't specifically, there isn't a specific card here, but someone might be taking a bit of a break from social media if that's something that causes stress. And I think I've pretty much already said someone, if you're having time to yourself, then you're probably going to be less likely to socialise as well. All right, let's look at the Seven of Pentacles. So you're back, the Emperor's back. What else do we need to know here? In reverse, why are there so many cards in reverse? Um, which one first, the bottom one? Ten of uh, Swords, Knight of Wands. Again, it's an energy for me of taking your time. You've got two opposites, well, slightly opposites here. Um, the Emperor, obviously the Emperor does, is someone who makes plans. He is proactive, but he's not going to rush into anything. He will not rush into anything. And then you've got the Knight of Wands, which upright, that would usually be the quick, um, how do I want to put it, quick energy, um, sometimes can be frivolous and make plans on a, on a whim but even he's in reverse again sort of indicating don't rush don't feel like you have to rush don't feel like you know pressured or like there's a need to rush anything the ten of swords you've got the ten of swords there so if there is something that needs to end at all it might be again it's not necessarily saying don't end whatever needs to end. It's just, again, take your time in how you go about it. You don't have to rush and do it suddenly. Like, you know, if you, for example, if you wanted to leave a job, um, it's not necessarily saying don't do that. It's just, you know, have a plan in place before you do that because um, it will probably be more beneficial that, to you than even if you're really frustrated. It's probably more beneficial to take your time and have a plan than to just lose your shit and just say I'm out of here <laughs> and I'm not knocking anyone for that sometimes there's a time and place for everything isn't there you know sometimes the, the, it's best if you just get the hell out of there but um in this particular reading in this situation it's kind of you know take your time no sudden moves I think if I was going to name it and they've flown everywhere um if I was going to name the reading I'd probably call it no sudden moves spare with me a minute See, the fact that I just shuffled and the cars just flew everywhere chaotically on the floor, it kind of, it's an indication that, okay, um, it's an indication that if a sudden move is made, it's going to be absolute chaos. I think that's the kind of um, hint I'm getting from that. So one more for that seven of pentacles. So we've got the magician. Again, it's it's making plans and then with the magician there, because the magi magician is somebody who uses all of the tools available to them. So again, it's it's considering what tools do you have, whether that is literal or metaphorical, Con considering everything, taking everything to, into account. You know, again, going back to that example, if you wanted to leave a job and you were you, you say if you wanted if you knew you wanted to leave the job, but you didn't even know what you wanted to move on to. It might be things like considering all the skills you have, all the abilities you have, um, looking at your CV, looking at your past experience, everything that you've learned, everything that you have, everything that you know, and using that to formulate a plan um, to change things, to move forward, etc. But again, takes time. Let's have a look at that Nine of Swords. More reversals. This is insane. Right, we've got, okay, I love that. The Queen of Cups has come up. That is uh, Cancerian energy and it is that mother energy. Um, again, with the nine, I mean, the Nine of Wands is stress as well, isn't it? Nine of Swords is stress, Nine of Wands is stress. Both different, like the Nine of Swords is the mental. Nine of Wands is more physical stress. And then you've got the Queen of Cups there. So again, it's the need for that kind of nurturing energy. And that kind of energy, it is... I guess I want to say it's a slower energy as well, isn't it? It takes its time. It's like she's got all the time in the world, all the patience in the world. Although I think the Queen of Pentacles, for some reason I have this thing with the Queen of Pentacles where I feel like she, out of all of the queens, would be the one who is more in line with having all the time in the world to do make decisions for people, whatever. But yeah, um, that time out again, that's what the word sanctuary again is coming to mind. 
and look at these look at the both of them um i know mother earth you would say it's more of a um uh, because it's earth it's earth energy so as i say for me it feels like taurus um this card feels more like taurus but it's still that nurturing energy look at them they've both got the same expression on their faces eyes closed just looking very peaceful a slight smile um yeah and they're both holding something as well i've just realized she's is she holding her stomach the um the world the pregnant stomach can't tell because that's in the way but it looks like she's either holding the stomach or the butterflies on her hand or something but she's like holding it and this kind of a sense of reverence there and then with this queen she's holding the shell which is um i guess it's another version of a cup of emotion so there's a message there for someone to take care of your emotions as well no matter what's going on no matter how much you've got going on around you in terms of action and decisions and whatever you know you've got to take care of your emotions as well um so one more for that nine of swords we have the star and this for me here it is coming up as kind of healing i mean yes it is considering if there's something that you want to change and you're taking a time out to figure that out it is figuring out what you what you really want what your heart wants what feels um important to you but there's a sense of healing with that as well and the fish are standing out for me the fish are standing out but anyway let's get one more for that <laughs> the back <laughs> wow big as i say if i was gonna give this reading a title i would call it no sudden moves you've got the king of cups again a person who is um wouldn't rush into anything at all um he's very aware of his emotions so that message again of you have to take care of your emotions is very much there with him because he that's that's what he's about isn't it? he's about he's having that strong awareness of his emotions but kind of Prote protective energy as well protection of his emotions because he can be quite reserved with it and he's not going to rush and he's observant you've got the um what the hell is it called is it a telescope telescope periscope something like that um he's going to be observant he's going to be observant he's going to consider his feelings before he he does anything and then the hermit's back again so again take your time let's look at that wheel of fortune and you apply apply the message as it's if it's if it feels like it resonates apply it as it's as it's relevant in your life so wheel of fortune in reverse i mean again as i think i've already said about a million times now the wheel of fortune for me in reverse it's no it, it's things will change but not yet it's it's taking its time so we've got the moon so that for me, that can be things that are unknown, like things can't move until something's figured out or something's discovered or uncovered. You've got the hanged man, which is a similar energy where things, it's where you keep stuff to yourself, isn't it? But with the hanged man, it's kind of like, it's again, it's a kind of a card of introspection, looking at the different perspectives, figuring it out for yourself, taking that time out to figure it out for yourself get one more you have okay you've got the hierophant it came out at that angle and i'm going to keep it at that angle um i love well, one thing i love about this hierophant card we know that the hierophant can be a spiritual teacher it can also be about rules but this one is meditation um and obviously when you meditate th there are different reasons people meditate sometimes it's to calm down sometimes it is to um for insight isn't it for like spiritual insight or to help calm you down enough to make decisions so bear that in mind as well i feel like saying to you as much as the hierophant is usually an external because it was the angle wasn't it is an external um spiritual teacher i almost feel like it's kind of telling you to be your own your own teacher in this whatever this is whether it is spiritual or in any other form it feels like it's telling you to be your own teacher to make the decision because again as it keeps saying you've got the hermit that's come up twice it's about going within and making the decision for yourself anything else for anyone who's into meditation that might help it might help you if you you need to calm down or make decisions i mean even the hermit here looks like they're meditating as well in fact it looks like it's even more than meditation it looks like um spiritual journeying um to be honest 
like where people go into a deep sort of trance and they go on a journey spiritually in their mind. It looks like that. Anything else? Final card in, re in reverse. I love it. Two of swords. We know the two of swords can be about making decisions, don't we? It can be, it can be two truths, but it can be about making decisions again. It's in reverse. Um, again, taking that time out to get clear before making any decisions or any sudden moves. So I'll leave that there. So the, I guess it is just about taking your time to figure things out, isn't it? And decide what you want. Let me get you a Power of Surrender card to wrap up the reading. Any final messages? We'll probably get you about three for Aries, Sun, Moon and Rising. Yours keep coming out in reverse Aries. I don't know. I guess that's just the whole slow down energy. You've got surrender unhealthy relationships. Let go of, a, of relationships that don't serve you, including un unavailable or toxic people. You deserve to be treasured by others and to be surrounded by positive people. So that kind of goes back to with that three of cups where I mentioned who are your genuine supporters. Um... And who do you want to connect with? And obviously, yes, it can be relationships with people, but it can also be relationships with situations. Like I've said it as well as other readers have said it as well. We have a relationship with all sorts of things, with our jobs, with food, with social media, because I brought that up at one point. Um, whatever your relationship is with something um, where you're needing to take a time out, it may cause you stress. Yeah, bear that in mind. Um, anything else? Oop. I wasn't going to take them, but because they flew across the floor and room so dramatically, <laughs> right, you've got surrender to the beauty of the natural world. Take a relaxing break and spend time in nature. Replenish yourself by feeling the beauty and the ecstasy there. Yep, somebody might want to take that, literally, to be honest. I mean, that goes back to the whole taking time out, time to yourself. I mean, meditation, even if you want to do that. For some, you might feel more connected in nature and you might want to try tree hogging, which I have tried and... It sounded weird to begin it, it did I'm not gonna lie I thought this is just weird <laughs> like the idea of doing it and I did it and to be frank it was fine it um there is something quite soothing about hugging a tree but you don't if you feel that's too far you don't have to hug a tree you can literally touch it just put your hands your palms on it um or sit by it or whatever just make physical contact with it if you if you want to try that you don't have to um just bear with me we've got a card that's flown across the room and it says, surrender comparisons with other people. Keep your eyes trained on yourself. Focus on your own strengths, attractiveness and power. And remember where we, we came to that bit where I said about the magician. It's coming up with a plan and looking at your ability, skills. That's one thing to consider there. Um, I mean, obviously, you can take this literally as well. And I said about being your own spiritual teacher. So, again, be careful. Um, you know, that thing about too many cooks spoil the breath sometimes if you... If you're trying to make a decision and you seek advice sometimes, and sometimes you're not even asking for the advice, but too many people stick you know, their noses in and make it confusing. Um, focus on, on you and what your mind is saying and what your feelings are saying. So I think that's it, Aries. We're going to leave it there. Thank you, as always, for supporting the channel. Thank you for watching and take care. Hi, Leo. Welcome to your reading for July 2024. These are the books from the Oracle decks I'm going to be using to start off your reading. So we're just going to get straight into it. So we're still in cancer season and there is going to be, well, sorry, by the time you watch this, um, I'm sure the, the new moon in cancer would have passed already on Friday, the 5th of July. Um, so that's something to bear in mind. We're going to start off with a message from the Angels and Ancestors Oracle deck, first of all. So what does Leo Sun, Moon and Rising need to know for July 2024? Leo Sun, Moon and Rising, July 2024. You've got a couple. Okay, you have. This is one of my favourite cards in the deck, I have to say. Um, warrior, be fearless and stand strong. And you also have Earth Guardian, stay rooted and grounded. And I don't know why I feel the need to say this, but notice how they're both holding on to um, 
something. <laughs> um, well, it's a weapon. It's like a, what do you call it again now? My mind has gone blank. My mind has gone completely blank. He's holding onto his weapon. I can't remember the name right now. Um, and then this is like a staff, I'm going to guess, of some sort. Um, okay. I feel like it's, a, well, it's earth, earth guardian, so it's earth energy, but it's like a mixture of fire and earth energy here. Right, let's get on with the reading and see what comes out. So I'm going to put the, yeah, we'll do it like that, I think. Hopefully you can see that. And let's get the tarot cards out for you. What does Leo Sun Moon or Rising need to know for July 2024? Judgment. Six of Swords. I feel like saying to someone, don't let anyone else sway your decision or your choices. So that might be just a little message in itself. Okay, let's see what else comes out. You've got the Empress. Shall I say it? Yeah, I'll say it because it's come out. With the Empress there, the, the thought of choose you is coming in. Choose you. So I've already had, don't let anyone sway your decisions or choices and choose you. So I don't know if that's just a little mini message on its own or if it will be part of the main message, but we'll see as we progress through the reading we'll see what comes out anything else for leo I nearly said cancer then oh so i don't know if anyone um the thought is coming to mind if anyone has a mother possibly cancerian but a mother who can be who could be overbearing possibly or doesn't like one particular decision you're making or choice you've made or is just generally pretty they, they, they don't really like a lot of the decisions you make but that just came to mind anything else for leo sun moon or rising right wow i love that i love that that's that seven of wands energy there um and it feels like the, that as well because to me these are really similar energies if you're being fearless and strong you're standing up for what you believe in and, and you're grounded in your own your own beliefs you know your own thoughts, your own decisions. So, yeah. Okay. This, to me, is the combination of those two energies. And it's interesting, after I said, as somebody got a mother, I mean, I'm still getting the message to use you for the Empress as well, but when I said, has anyone got a mother who's overbearing or doesn't like your decisions, and then the Seven of Wands is after the Empress, which can represent mother, can't it? Mother energy. So I wonder if anyone's having to stand up to their mother or mother figure. Let's get the clarifiers out and see what comes up. And you know what's interesting as well in that Six of Swords? Um, there's a there can be a protective energy around it because someone's escaping to go off to, to, some, to karma waters, we usually say, don't we, with this card. We could, we could assume that this may be the mother figure, this may be the child figure, so it's a protective energy. And again, as I said, as a parent, I'm a parent as well, parents can be overbearing at times, can't they, where they, they don't like the decisions you make or choices you make, not necessarily because they're being an asshole, but because they just want to protect you. Um, but you know as you get as you grow up you have to learn to make your own decisions whether you're going to get hurt or not i mean obviously in extreme situations we'd we'd probably do whatever we can to stop someone from getting hurt but you know day-to-day -day life decisions relationships etc people we have to learn for ourselves don't we but yeah parents can still be overbearing even when people are adults there's people in their bloody 60s with overbearing parents um i'm 
I appreciate the fact that I will never be one of them. I'm very fortunate. I've got a mother who has always, I mean, yeah, she's sometimes she's expressed that she's concerned about decisions I've made, but overall she just leaves me alone <laughs> to get on with it. Like I can talk to her about stuff and I know that she'll never force her opinions down my throat. It will always be, well, you got to do what's best for you. Yeah, I might be concerned about such and such, but it's your choice. You know, she's got that attitude. Um, okay, so that might be very relevant for someone here, but let's get into the judgment card first of all. We have the emperor who is a very sovereign being, <laughs> very sovereign being. No one's going to tell the emperor what to do. He makes his own plans. He makes his own choices. He builds his own empire. Um, so you've got the emperor there. Anything else? I wonder if there's something going up. I mean, I, I can't check it now, but I, I'm wondering if there's something going on with Aries astrologically. I've just done the Aries reading and Aries showed up in that. Um, did Aries come up in there? Yeah, Aries came up in their reading and was on the bottom of the deck as well at the start. Um, so I wonder if there's something, some sort of clash or something going on between Aries and Cancerian energies. I don't know, I'm not an astrologer, but if anyone knows, please feel free to share a comment about that. Anyway. Anything else for judgment? Um, so we've got... I'm just looking at which order I want to put them in. I don't think it matters with these two. We've got the Five of Cups and the Seven of Cups. And we also have the Knight of Swords as well. So we know with the, I mean, the Judgment card, yes, it is about decisions and it can be second chances as well. Um... And set the second chance can either be a literal second chance with the same person, same situation, or it's just a similar event in your life. And it's another chance um, to do that as well. But OK, it, I would say it feels like whatever decisions or, cho or choices that you've made in the past, there's a new opportunity now. But there's something here where it's almost, I don't, I don't know if this is the right way to put it, but it's all almost like you're more equipped now. I'm guessing that that's one way of saying that you've probably learned from the past. Um, and even if you, if you feel like you haven't healed completely from a situation or you feel like you haven't learned enough from a past experience, it, sh it shouldn't stop you from moving forward because what can happen if you move forward and make a make a choice is that you it either works or it doesn't and you learn from that um so there's always opportunities for progress and learning etc but again even if you have made poor a, what you feel may be a poor decision in the past in this in the present now it's about going forward as it says being fearless and standing strong and staying rooted and grounded and I would say in your truth whatever that means for you I will get one more on that uh yeah we're gonna put those like that by the judgment card so it's almost like trust again sort of trust your your decisions trust in your choices no one else can make them for you unless you let them but um yeah so we have the ace of cups here and again, it, it feels like trust, the specific word trust in yourself. Let's look at the Six of Swords. That was a bit dramatic. It's in reverse. We've got the Three of Cups here. So, I mean, that blatantly looks like um, with the Six of Swords, it's moving on. It can be moving on from past situations that weren't beneficial to you. So with the three of cups there, that would be that could be relationships, whether it's friendship or whatever with people um, who weren't, I guess, true friends or true supporters is one way of putting it. So it could be where you've had to move on from that in the past. Again, in the present, um, with it, the, that theme coming up of standing strong um, and grounded in your own beliefs, your truth, etc. It, it, for others, it may not be about moving um, away from those people, but not taking what they say to heart and 
and not allowing not allowing them to um to sway whatever decisions you have to make slightly similar energy um to the Aries reading where there was a theme of thinking well there was more to it than that but like thinking for themselves um let's see what else comes up with that six of swords that can be this could also be as well I think I've kind of said it anyway it's like where you know you get involved with the wrong crowd that kind of energy as well and moving on from that right we've got two of cups okay and the two of cups upright like this that would be a more supportive relationship so it's moving away from that um so lack of support the wrong crowd however you want to put it bad advice moving towards genuinely supportive connections it may even be just a change in a relation in the relationship possibly with a mother figure um, or a cancerian where it's gone from someone being overbearing towards you or overprotective towards you and kind of having to put your foot down and say no it's my life it's my choice even if i fuck it up then that's my fuck up to deal with and i'll i'll deal with that um so six of swords anything else with the six of swords king of swords in reverse anything else four of wands again the word trust comes to mind and the four of wands it can be the your roots can it your roots your foundation let's just get one more for that you've got the seven of swords and the sorry the page of cups and the seven of well yeah same thing seven of swords and page of cups there's a feeling of vulnerability there which the six of swords it is a feeling of vulnerability if you're trying to escape to calmer waters then you've been in a position where you were vulnerable um but again i'm just getting the whole thing the king of swords is in reverse because that to me it's like a lack of trust in um in your beliefs in your truth in for some people who you are even and there's a need to um to get past that in whatever way you need to get past it whether it is putting your foot down with people or just learning to trust yourself and give yourself record give yourself credit and recognition where it's due for whatever experiences you've had and whatever you've learned and whatever you've been through um make sure you give yourself credit where it's due let's move on to the empress So you've got the king, okay, great. You've got the king of wands and the king of cups in reverse. Okay, yeah, I get that. Two of swords. Ace of wands. Ten of pentacles. Again, the energy is one of trusting yourself. You've got the... So this is all clarifying the Empress. So again, still could be someone's mother or mother figure is an issue here. Um, is a little bit, I don't want to say a spanner in the works, but yeah, something to consider. So mother could still be having an impact on things and there's, that needs to be dealt with. Um, but again, also I'm still getting that message of choose you with the Empress as well. Choose you. The King of Wands here, that's a confident person like... I have to, I got this weird thought when the King of Wands came up that the King of Wands mother couldn't even tell them what to do. Um, I feel like out of all of the all of the um, kings in the tarot, he he would be the most rebellious one. Like even as adult, like obviously as adult he'd probably be more diplomatic. But I feel like the the other ones they they would. Sorry, I just thought I had someone coming into my apartment then. Um, yeah, the other the other kings, like say the King of Pentacles, the King of Cups, would try would want to make their mothers happy. I'm not saying she could necessarily bust them about and tell them exactly what to do, but they take it into consideration. The King of Swords, even that, I think they try to reason with the mother or mother figure. But I feel like the King of Wands, like they'd be respectful, but there's just no way in hell. It's like whatever their decision is, that's the end of story. Um, there's no, what is it? No debate, no dispute, whatever. So that's a very confident person. We have the King of Cups here. For me, it, it's meaning 
if there is someone that you're needing to stand up to, especially if it's a mother figure or whoever, it's it's being very honest about how you feel. It doesn't mean that you set out necessarily to purposely hurt their feelings, but you can't hold those feelings in. You know, for those of you, if you do have a parent, mother or whatever, who is overbearing and tries to influence all your decisions and, you know, sometimes family members or friends or whoever can be emotionally manipulative as well, can't they? Like, the, I've yeah, I've had this happen to me where I've had... I'm not going to name names of the people where people have emotionally guilt tripped me um, and it has swayed my decisions because I didn't want to hurt their feelings and I felt obligated and we got to be careful of that. And it's just reminded me of a video that I did quite, a, it would have been last year now, I think, called, um, oh God, what was it? Embracing Boundaries or something, um, where it spoke about this stuff specifically where people that you care about, where they impact your your, they have a massive impact on your feelings in your day-to-day -day life and you and they push your boundaries and sometimes it can be malicious and sometimes it's just that they have a close bond with you and they're scared of losing you or they're just being overprotective and it, it went into that it was a reading on that so if that's if anyone feels like watching that that might help if that's something you're going through as well um so yeah king of cups would be you got to express how you feel if you if you value your relationship with that person and you want them to value you um completely then you've got to be honest with them yeah you can't uh, with this two of swords it can i guess one way of looking at it it can be a bit of a limbo energy sometimes because it can be um you know like if you've got two truths and then you've got a stalemate because you can't decide what decision to make that is limbo you can't let that keep you in limbo you have to be honest about what you want what you feel if somebody's interfering and it's holding you back, you've got to be honest about it and be proactive. Take action towards what you what you feel is best for you and stand by that because it, this is about your future. It's about your foundation and your progression, not theirs. It's your life. Um, seven of Wands it, it is just standing up for yourself, isn't it? So anything else with that? Do I need to do that again? Yes, i got a massive yes. So the Sun in Reverse came out. I mean, wow. The thought just came in, don't let anyone rain. It said shit. I, the first thought I get was don't let anyone shit on your parade, but it's actually don't let anyone rain on your parade. So, <laughs> yeah, because usually the sun doesn't come out when there's clouds and rain, does it? Or it, it can, but usually afterwards. Um, so, yeah, don't let anyone rain on your parade. Try that again. I would say, actually, I think what I wanted to say was don't let anyone shit on your happiness either, because that can be a thing, you know, sometimes not people aren't as happy as you'd expect them to be um, when you achieve things. Yeah. High priestess, follow your own gut feelings, your own intuition. What more can I say about that? I think I said it in the um, Aries reading about too many cooks. I might have said it beware of too many cooks of all the breath again too many people interfering in your decisions with your decisions your choices your life it's not their life it's yours oh i love that you've got justice and the fool um standing up for yourself that's that's what you get isn't it and standing by your beliefs being fearless staying rooted and grounded in your beliefs your ideas etc it it gives the fairest outcomes to you and it gives you your sense of liberation as well you've got nothing holding you back right so i'm going to wrap the reading up for you with a card from the power of surrender deck so final message okay final messages wow interesting Surrender resentments. Holding on to resentments only poisons you. Try to forgive others for their shortcomings and keep moving forward toward positive situations in your life. Um, so, yeah, for any for situations where you if you've had to bite your tongue um, or anything like that, again, there's a need to speak up and stand up for yourself and stand up for what you believe in, because it will when you when you hold things in like that, like that King of Cups can do when he's upright, it it can breed resentment if you're having to bite your tongue all the time or walk on eggshells. Surrender to miracles. Be open to miracles occurring in your life. Feel and know that these events are real. Let go of any resistance and banish any doubt that miracles can happen. If you do, well, there's a couple of ways of looking at it. If you do have any fears, like say there's an opportunity that you want to pursue, um, but there's doubts there because you made 
past decisions that you felt were wrong and they weren't beneficial, etc. Again, it's having trust and faith in yourself um, and moving forward and standing up for what you want and what you believe in because that's when the miracles happen. And also, again, if it's standing up to people specifically, you may feel like there's no point. And I can understand that where sometimes if someone's really set in their ways, it's like, oh, there's just no point even arguing with them because it just, they're just not going to listen, etc. It may be for some that once you do stand up to them, you get a better reaction. And I'm not guaranteeing this, but you might get a better reaction that you hoped for. And the miracle could be that they actually respect you more. <laughs> sometimes that can feel like a miracle especially if it's someone you thought oh they're so bloody stubborn I just can't imagine them ever um, thinking any differently but let's get you one more message and wrap the reading up for you oh that's another one that's another interesting one as well surrender to the magic of who you are we all have magic in us, even in, mundane, in the mundane aspects of life. Remember that you are a magical being with a uniqueness and worth that come from just being you. Again, trusting in yourself, trusting in what you believe, what you stand for, what you want to stand up for. Yeah, nothing more I can say about that. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for supporting the channel as always. Thank you for watching. That's the end of the message. Take care. Hi Sagittarius, welcome to your reading for July 2024. These are the books from the Oracle decks I'm going to be using to do your reading so we'll get into it. So we're still in cancer season and I believe by the time you watch this video we'll just have had a new moon in cancer on Friday the 5th of July. So you may want to bear that in mind but we're going to start off with a message from the Angels and Ancestors Oracle deck for you. So Sagittarius, Sun, Moon and Rising, what do you need to know? Sagittarius, Sun, Moon and Rising, what do you need to know? You have Air Guardian, shift your perception. Let's just get this green clear. Okay, I think you can see that, hopefully. So let's get your tarot cards out. So Sagittarius, Sun, Moon and Rising, what do you need to know for July 2024? So do I want these together? Yeah, okay. We've got the Emperor. Are these two keep coming out in everybody's reading. I think you're the third one. I think... I said it in the last reading, which I did because I'm doing all the fire signs first. Um, I'm wondering if there's something astrologically going on with Aries. I'm not a astrologer, um, but I'm wondering if there's something with Cancer and Aries or just something with Aries in general. I can't check right now, but um, feel free if you if you know more about this to leave a comment. Um, OK, let's see what else comes out for you. We have the lovers. So interestingly, I'm getting a, a strong energy of determination. You know, when someone has a real energy of, I want this, <laughs> I want this, I will have this at all costs. Um, and I'm just trying to contemplate how that comes into the shift with your perception card. But let's continue and we'll see. Five of Cups is next. Okay, I think I get why this might be here. I'll see what else comes out, but yeah, something's coming to mind here now. We have the Six of Cups and the Page of Swords. So there's an energy here. There is an energy here for at least one person of whatever it is that you want, that you really determine that you want to have. Um, you, you may not be able to get it, to be honest. Um, I don't know why I'm getting this. Um, and I don't know which which way it is whether this is coming from the Sagittarius or for some from someone else's energy. 
yeah, there's something here that I'd, there's, there's one message here that I'm not, I don't like that much. Um, you know, in relationships where there can be a person in a relationship that's really possessive. Um, so they can be possessive, they can be jealous, they can do things like spy, because the Page of Swords can be a spine type energy on someone, there's fears of losing someone and someone can become quite possessive, obsessive even. And that energy of if I can't have you, no one can, yeah, that concerns me a bit. And it could be someone external to you, it could be you that has this energy, that's just one message for someone that's come through. But um, I would say, if you're in a situation with somebody who's jealous on the jealous side or you've just or the, or you'd started to date someone and they're showing little red flags so you've got the red there with the emperor um little red flags that they might be quite jealous and possessive be careful um or even if you've broken up with somebody and they there's red flags after the breakup because sometimes the red flag comes after the breakup um you know, where they're, they're doing things like turning up in places that you are or calling you constantly, stuff like that. That is a bit of an obsessive. Yeah, it, it's not something I'd be comfortable with. I'd say just be careful about that, to be honest. Um, be careful about that. I know that's a bit of a strange one to come in, but be careful. And the way that shift your perception could work in that situation. So you know, some people say that they like a jealous partner because I, I don't know, maybe it makes them feel more confident. This might be a warning to someone if that's your situation, shift your perception in that because there's a fine line between someone who's a little bit jealous and someone who can become dangerous. So I'm not trying to terrify anybody with that, but just be careful. And again, say if you broke up with someone and they, they're just doing too much you might be thinking or some people might be saying to you oh, that just means that they really liked you and you know don't take it to heart but be careful with that you might have to shift your perception um to thinking should I be concerned about this you know is it becoming stalkerish but obviously use your own discernment in that's if that's your situation right I'm going to try and move on from this so overall the energy I got was a determination so that aside, that relationship stuff that I talked about, that aside, it looks like a determination to get something that you want because you've got the lovers there as well. These two are both determined energies. Um, the lovers, it's that feeling of connection, passion, it's desire. But as I say, because the five of cups there is there, it's almost like you can't get it or you can't get it the way you want it. So there's, that's probably where shift your perception comes in. Um, and then you've got the page of swords there for me that can be a card it's it's like um it can be a new truth it can be learning something like gaining information on something ideas that sort of energy and with the six of cups there it's almost like it can't be the way it was so again say if it was a relationship or or there was a, a person that you wanted wanted in particular um if you have history with that person, it's almost like it can't be the way it was before. Something has to change or something has changed and it's, you need to accept that possibly. Um, but let's get clarifying the cards. So the Emperor and Knight of Wands, what do we need to know about that? Nine of Wands. The tower. The justice card in reverse, not a surprise there. Page of swords and six of wands. Why do I feel like somebody likes the challenge of something difficult um when something is difficult to get somebody likes the challenge so again in relationships some people genuinely like the challenge of pursuing somebody who's not that um who's not showing proper interest This is an interesting reading because certain thoughts are coming to mind and I'm like, that couldn't be, that couldn't be right, could it? 
So obviously with the tower, as I said, that is, that's something, it's a struggle, isn't it? It's a battle, it's difficult. Um, again, I'm getting the energy of, um, I feel weird saying it if somebody's had to deal with somebody who's kind of um, jealous or obsessive, that would make for a difficult relationship. And it doesn't have to be, ro it could be romantic, but it doesn't have to be romantic because you can have family members that get jealous as well. You know, if you've got like um, parents or siblings or whatever, or just cousins or whatever, friends even, there can be jealousy amongst in friendships too, where people get possessive with one another. This tower, I mean, I always note on this tower, I always feel like she's the one, well, I'm assuming she's the one that caused that tower. She caused it to fall. But it is, a, in this reading, it feels really chaotic and, yeah, it's not a nice feeling. I mean, the tower is, dis I, I quite like the tower card, although I've said before I shouldn't like it because it can be massive destruction. But it feels really chaotic, like, you know, almost where someone, it's either an energy of, and I'm surprised the Five of Swords isn't here. Let's look at the bottom of the deck. No, it's not there. Um, almost an energy of someone being willing to get whatever they want at all costs, even if it means causing chaos and destruction, um, or someone already has done that. But because you've got the Justice card in reverse, it's kind of, it's prob it's kind of, there's a sense of it being problematic. Okay, I think that's one message in its in itself. That's one little mini message in itself. I'm trying to look at it overall with a bigger, with a greater perspective. Okay, I'll say what I'm what I'm feeling overall, um, without necessarily bringing relationships into it. Again, it feels very determined. And it does feel like an energy of wanting to get what someone wants at all costs. Um, you may have made attempts to get what you want already and it hasn't gone to plan with that, with that justice card. It's where you don't get what you want. And again, with that page of swords, six of six of ones, it is a need to, to, to have a new, a new plan, a new idea, a new truth and basically shift your perception to actually... For, for things to work out successfully, whatever success means to you. It's a really, I can't even describe the energy. It's like something where you can't necessarily, unless what I've already said is what's relevant, what, what it is with the relationship type stuff and jealousy and stuff like that. But it's such an odd energy that it's hard to put your finger on to, to, um, to say specifically what it is. So if it feels like it resonates with anything in particular in your life, then yep, take what resonates and apply it as you will. But yeah, there is an energy of getting what you want at all costs or someone getting what they want at all costs because it could be, as I say, it can be an, ex an energy external to you um, if it's not you. Let's look at the lovers. Some of the messages that come in are so odd sometimes. I'm getting, for someone, there's a message here that someone's a liar. That someone could be a liar. Where they might be doing something or manipulating and it's there's nothing like the Five of Swords or the Devil or something here or Seven of Swords. But there could be a bit of manipulation or, what's the other word? Um, when people don't give the whole truth. Um, oh God, I can't remember what it is now. It's basically where someone kind of withholds the truth. So they're not necess necessarily telling a blatant lie. Um, it's not necessarily a blatant lie, but omission of the truth, I think it is something to that effect. This could relate to something for someone at work as well, potentially, because, you know, sometimes work environments can be brutal as well and ruthless. But, um, right, lovers, so let's move on. Why is the lovers here? That's too many try that again okay no I'll tell you what came out actually the eight of swords came out do I yeah okay I was gonna ask myself mentally do I need to keep it yes it needs to be kept yeah eight of swords again it's the energy of wanting something but 
struggling to get what you want, like having a massive sense of determination, but it being difficult to get what you want or it's not even possible, but being stuck in this mindset of, well, no, I've got to have that. I've got to do that. I've got to do it this way even. Um, okay. Four of Swords, Queen of Wands. I was just getting another message coming through with that Nine of Wands and the Tower card. Um, if it's not you causing destruction, um, I mean, obviously, I've already kind of said that it could be reversed and it could be someone else being destructive here. But it's almost a sense of that another separate message I'm getting. Sorry, my phone keeps on buzzing messages every two seconds as well. Um, it's almost that fear of destruction as well that, like, you know, if you're struggling to do something or achieve something, or make something work and you can get in this frame of mind where you sort of set any way sometimes where it's like no it's got to be done this way it's got to be done this way otherwise it just won't work and it'll all be a disaster and blah 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 it's giving a bit of that as well like so the emperor can be stubbornness can't it where you sort of stick to one way of doing things because you fear that if you don't it's going to be a ap absolute chaos but realistically the chaos is you doing the same thing over and over again you know that whole thing about um madness the definition of madness being doing the same over and over again and getting the same result which isn't beneficial it can be that energy too but either way it's it's shifting the perception on what is um what's desired because something ain't working here um right so the lovers as i said it's sort of been that is that is kind of a being stuck in an energy of thinking something has to be a certain way or there's got to be a specific thing that has to be gained and there's just something about it that's not um it's not working anything else for that lover's card please let's get one more Again, that didn't feel right. So you know what I'm getting from the four four of swords and queen of wands is it feels it feels a little bit delusional, to be frank. It feels sort of delusional. Um, with the Four of Swords, it's kind of an energy of blocking everyone or anything out that feels like interference and almost having a false, with the Queen of Wands, and I absolutely love the Queen of Wands, but it's like a fall, it's an energy of, oh wow, okay, oh wow, there's a connection there, but I'll say that in a minute, um, a false sense of doing the right thing or doing things the right way, um, pride, is it pride? maybe i guess it's pride but the the thing that came to mind now that i'm seeing the dragon here for anyone that watched game of thrones or um house of the dragons i've just started that again forgot it was back on actually so i'm only on episode two um um Daenerys, where in the final series which i know a lot of people said they hated the final season final series where she spoiler alert if anybody's kind of watching it or wants to watch it and doesn't want to know what happened spoiler alert now where she kind of goes mad at the end and sort of destroys everything and everyone um it's it's i'm not saying that's what's what you're doing or someone around you is doing necessarily but it's that false sense of i'm this is the right thing i'm doing the right thing but really it's it's not beneficial or it's destructive um but there's just a sense, I don't know, I feel like pride is the closest thing I can think of. And it's not, it doesn't necessarily mean it's malicious. It's just, you know, when you get set in your ways sometimes with things. Um, and focusing more on how things look out, outwardly even as well. Like, oh no, I'm doing the right thing. Like, I'm getting praised for this, blah, blah, blah. Um, but realistically, it's either there's something detrimental about it. There could be something dishonorable about it even. Um, there's just something not right about it. And it's kind of like ignoring that, um, I, I do I want to say gut feeling, maybe ignoring your gut feeling as well, but just something about ignoring what's, what's right and what's best, to be honest. And part of what could be right or what's best is moving on with the world being there. 
And then obviously, if you're doing something that's not beneficial, but kind of struggling with it and saying, no, no, I've got to do it this way. I can't do it any other way. It's holding you back from a new cycle too. Two of Pentacles. I love I love the fact that in this two, well, not love it, but in this two of Pentacles, usually one's up, one's down. So it's it's um it's up and down. But this one, she everything's in alignment. Um, and I don't mean that things are in alignment like for you in your reading, but there's just it's like a back and forth. Um, it's a literal back and forth. It's not up and down. It's just back and forth. There's something relevant about that back and forth. It's almost like, again, it's that that it's a full sense of security. It is a full sense of security. It's like, because she's standing there perfectly with that perfectly in balance, the things are perfectly in balance. You've got the infinity symbol. It's like an illusion that you can do this forever, but you probably can't, to be honest. Um, shall I get, I'll get one more after that two of pentacles. As I say, there's some sort of illusion or delusion here and there's a need. I mean, you've got the shifty perception card there. Yeah, you've got the hierophant there and it's in reverse. So to me, it's almost like following some rules, whether it's rules external to yourself or your your internal rules that you've set or how you think things should be morally. Following that um, and it's there's something that's not beneficial about it, that's just not it's not working but there's almost an illusion that no but this is the right thing to do this is the best way to do it oh, okay let's look at the five of cups so we've got the nine of swords wow this is a really interesting energy um sagittarius really interesting energy so as we know, the five of cups, it can be where things have been disappointing or are disappointing, but someone's very much focused on whatever's going on here. Um, you could say that it's whatever's been lost, whatever's in the present even, um, but missing the point that there's, there's opportunity behind them with the two cups there. There's opportunity to connect with something that will match their cup that's actually upright behind them. With the Nine of Swords and the Nine, the Five of Pentacles there and the Nine of Pentacles again, it's a, with that Nine of Pentacles, it feels, I, I know how things look, but sometimes as a reader, it feels a little bit different from how it looks. It's almost an oblivious type energy or avoidant type energy. That's what it feels like, avoiding. It's almost like, say if you're in a stressful situation, you know it's stressful, you know it's not necessarily detrimental, but you're kind of ignoring it. Let's see what else comes out for that. Because you feel obligated to do things a certain way possibly or because of what you want. Um, there's a, there's like, a, um, you know, and we talk about a means to an end. Like one example of that would be, you know, being in a, being in a job that someone hates for decades absolute decades where it could cause all sorts of stress and anxiety and all sorts of shit's gone on but it's like now I've got to stick it out I've got I've just got to stick it out I've got no other options like the person sees it as they have no other options and they just want to get through and get through until they complete the um complete it and yeah complete the contract get to retirement and it's like yep I can just keep doing this until I get to retirement or whatever and it'll be fine but realistically it's like there are other opportunities, potentially other opportunities out there for you if you kind of shift your perception. Um, yeah, it's, I, I don't know how else to explain it, to be honest. Queen of Swords is here and she was at this angle. So I'm going to take her in reverse. And then you've got the judgment. So again, it's that's the Queen of Swords in reverse for me is a stubborn energy upright she's great upright she tells her story she welcomes in other people's shoes as well in reverse it's like no this is what I think this is what I believe nobody's going to tell me any different it's it's a stubborn type energy um but with the judgment card there it, it's an indicator that there is another path that could be chosen another way it's really funny Sagittarius because of the Leo and Aries readings that I just did it was more along the lines of um, trusting in what they believe. And this one feels more like have an open mind, 
don't be so stuck on what you think is the right way you know see see other perspectives and we haven't got the hanged man have we but yeah see things from other perspectives because the way that things are right now or whatever it is you want right now there's just something about it that you need to be open to something else or a different way let's look at the six of cups and page of swords seven of cups I've uh, got the Empress and the Lovers. So the Seven of Cups, right, first of all, I said the Page of Swords. Um, that can be new truths. Being It can be about being open to learning. You've got the Six of Cups there, so it might be a need to do things differently from the way they've been done in the past. Seven of Cups in reverse for me, in this reading, it's not being open to any other... Um, to any other choices, any other options. Like, it's almost like your heart's closed, in a way. Um, so again, going back to the relationship scenarios, it could be that someone's set on being with a particular person, and it's like, whether you're with them already and they're not treating you well, or you wanna be with them and it's just not looking good, it's kind of blocked, in a way. Um, with the Empress, that's kind of a call for growth and creativity. So again, having an open mind and, and being like, you could, you could really expand more if you open your mind and be creative and welcome something new in or be open to new things and looking at things differently. Let's see what comes after the Lovers card. So we've got the King of ones and the king of pentacles and again that's kind of a, a, a heads up or warning or whatever that whatever it is you want the king of ones upright is an innovator he's innovative he's dynamic he's an explorer um in reverse i, I would say for this reading it's kind of the opposite of that it's it's being kind of lacking that energy the innovative energy of being open to something new the king of pentacles is great is great i love the king of pentacles they're very nurturing stable etc but in this with this kind of energy in this reading it's um again it's it's is it taurus energy king of pentacles is taurus energy and one of the um i guess i'll say the shadow shadow side of taurus can be stubbornness where it's like well I've done it this way for so long, this has worked so far, blah, blah, blah. But it's only looking at the practical side of how things are working. Like, how do you feel? How do you really feel about it? Okay. Yeah, I don't, I can't give anything else to that because I've just pretty much repeated myself. Um, so I'm going to get you some final advice from the Power of Surrender deck. Yeah, I th there's nothing else I can say. All it's sort of saying is to be more open-minded and to kind of be willing to shift your perception in terms of what you really want, what you're doing, etc. Um, be be more aware, fully aware um, of how you feel and as well as the practical side of things as well. And be open to new to new ways and new opportunities Right, let's see what comes up for you as your advice. Advice for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon and Rising. Oh, there's so many. Oh, wow. Okay, I'm going to have to... Yeah, I'm going to have to take them all. There's like one, two, three, four, five. There's five of them, but I'm going to take them. Your reading's longer than the others. But one of, one in particular came up and I'm going to have to... Um, Yeah, because that one came out, I think... Oh, wow. Yeah, they're all really relevant. So... You've got surrender unhealthy relationships, let go of relationships that don't serve you, including unavailable or toxic people. You deserve to be treasured by others and to be surrounded by positive people. I'm not even going to elaborate on that because I spoke enough about relationships in different, I gave quite a few different examples. So take that as you will, if you feel you need to go back to the beginning of the reading for that. Um, yeah, go ahead. Surrender stubbornness. I, I couldn't, yeah, I brought up stubbornness quite a few times, so... Yeah. If you're tensing up or taking a rigid stance about something, gently observe yourself and become more yielding. This will help you communicate more lovingly with others and yourself. So again, I won't elaborate on that. I've talked about that enough. We'll do this one next. Surrender outdated beliefs about yourself. Let go of limiting ideas about yourself that originate from the past. Then 
you can own your power and sort in your life. So again, that is connected to that being set in your ways kind of thing where it's like, oh, well, it's got to be this way or I've got to behave this way. And it's like, try and open up to something new. You've got surrender to rest and sleep to prevent burnout, slow down under your need for quiet time and peaceful sleep to rejuvenate your mind, body and spirit. So you may feel the need to take that literally. The one example that's come into mind is in terms of work. Like if you've been working yourself to the bone and you're struggling and there's just determination. No, I've got to carry on. I've got to carry on. Be careful of burnout. And finally, surrender to complete healing. Open fully to the loving, compassionate forces of the universe that support your physical, emotional and spiritual healing. This message in particular, I would say, whatever is going on here, whatever is at the heart of any sort of stu stubbornness or beliefs or refusing to, to look at things differently or whatever, get to the heart of that. I mean, it's cancer season and I've already said, in cancer season, whatever feelings, um, and whatever feelings or to do with your, your roots, your family or whatever, the foundation of who you are is hidden beneath the surface and needs to be addressed in cancer season. It usually comes up and you cannot run and hide from those emotions. You may choose with your free will not to deal with it, not to address it, but it comes up. So I would pay attention to what's at the heart of the um, sort of this determination to stick with a certain belief or a certain way of doing things or a certain thing that you want when it is probably more beneficial to um to have an open mind and, and try something different. What's at the heart of that? Because there, if there's something to be healed here, that will help you to figure that out. So I will leave that there for you. I hope there was something helpful in it for you. Thank you as always for supporting the channel. Thank you for watching and take care. <laughs>